Welcome everyone to another webcast with me, Sunny Don Johnston. Um, tonight's webcast is on boundaries. Boundaries. Oh my gosh, if I have said that word once, I've said it a million times, boundaries. Not just for clients and students, but for myself as well. And I think that so often we struggle with boundaries because we feel like we're not being nice or we feel like we um, aren't being loving or we feel like it's our job or it's always been something that we've done and so people don't really know how to how to say no how to be able to be um, honoring of themselves loving themselves and for a lot of different reasons but one of the greatest reasons is because that's how we were taught not because you know anybody was bad or anybody was wrong but because they were teaching what they knew and we haven't been given the tools I guess to learn that from a very young age to take care of ourselves and to honor ourselves and to 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 love us and to not be doormats to other people and to have healthy personal boundaries so I'm going to begin tonight with um, some questions and so I'm going to read these questions and I just want you to think about them and how some of them may or may not apply so maybe you've been working on boundaries for a while maybe you have been really focused on how can I um, how can I uh, maintain the boundaries that I create maybe you're working on just creating the boundaries and you haven't even gotten to the maintenance part um, and maybe you just are very frustrated because you don't know how to be able to hold them um, so you're going to be in varying varying places based on you know wherever you are in your life and that's always changing so I'm going to read these to you and I just want you to think about it so these are ways that you deny your true value or your true self which weakens those those um, boundaries okay and these are more I'm focusing on emotional boundaries right now pretending to agree when you don't so do you do these things pretending to agree when you don't concealing your true feelings not being honest about how you really feel going along with an activity that you don't really want to do ah, okay you don't really want to do it but you just go along with it anyway never stating declining to join an activity that you do really want to do so not joining because you're embarrassed because you think that you're gonna stand out because you might be judged even though you really want to go pushing yourself beyond your limits physically mentally emotionally spiritually even pushing yourself beyond your limits working too hard or too long so again the the, the intensity or the length of time doing too much for others do you not know when to stop um, are you codependent are you always in a space of getting your value from doing something for someone else instead of doing something and being something for yourself not resting when you're tired um, not listening to your body not eating or eating regular or healthy meals and <clears throat> just kinda of throwing something down to get something down and, and all of these obviously once in a while that's okay. It's, has it become a habit? Has it become a, a, a an excuse as to why then you can't kind of hold your own energy? Ignoring your needs, whatever those might be, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, in place of somebody else's needs. Um, too little or too much time alone. So are you not ever taking that quiet time or are you isolating yourself? Um, too much or too little exercise insufficient contact with people who you really care about so keeping everybody at a distance um, doing too many leisure activities and not actually focusing enough on work or working too much and not having enough um, leisurely activities using chemicals to avoid yourself drugs alcohol or using compulsions to avoid yourself TV food, exercise, shopping, work, spending money, um, sex, games, Facebook, 
that you do compulsively or to excess. So these are some of the ways that you can um, deny your true value and your true self and weaken those emotional boundaries. So when those boundaries are weakened, when your emotional boundaries are weakened, what happens? When you feel irritated, you feel frustrated, you feel angry, usually you have a lot of fear and probably some blame because instead of being able to look at myself, I'm going to project it onto other people. Boundaries are one of the greatest challenges for people because we recognize that we need them but we don't feel good enough to stick to them oftentimes. So as you're thinking about some of the ways that you might do some of those activities, I'm going to give you a quiz. So hopefully you're sitting in a place where you can uh, take a moment to just, and you can just use your hand on this quiz. You don't have to um, write it down, write the answers down. You can just count on your fingers, your yeses or your noes, okay? So answering true or false, yes or no. Um, do any of these statements pertain to you? So let's start there so we can get an idea of and, and, and where your boundaries are and really be honest with yourself. So I remember um, when I was a child, especially, I used to do some of these quizzes to find out about your personality and things like that. And I always knew intuitively what the right answer was. So I would answer the right, right answer instead of the answer that was true just so that I would get the, the better score or the better personality or whatever it happened to be on the test. Don't cheat yourself. Be honest. Okay, here's your questions. There's only 10, you have 10 fingers. So if it's a true, just keep it on a finger. I lie about my feelings if the truth might upset someone. I lie about my feelings if the truth might upset someone. Number two, I want people to sense it when I've really hit my limit so that I don't have to say anything. They should just know. I want people to sense it so that I don't have to speak up. They should just know when I'm at my max. Number three, I go blank when I'm asked what I like, what I want, or what I think. Number four, my to-do list includes things that I don't have to do and things that I don't want to do. Now, that second one's a little bit, because eh, there are some things, sometimes you don't really feel like doing something, but don't have to do. There's things I don't have to do and or don't want to do. Number five, I eat, cry, smoke, drink, or drug when I'm angry. Eat, cry, smoke, drink, drug. You can put shop or gamble or sex or whatever that addiction pattern might be if that's something that applies to you. Number six, I sometimes feel quite drained and I explode at my loved ones and then I feel the guilt and shame around it. So I feel drained, I'm overtaxed, and then I blow up and then feel guilty and that's very likely it's a pattern. Number seven, I feel panicky about the thought of someone disliking me or disapproving of me. So when you think about letting somebody down, you literally feel it in your body. You, you, can't, you can't handle it. Number eight, I feel virtuous when I override my own needs or wishes to please others. Virtuous. Number nine, I feel resentful while doing things for others. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because there might be some people that you don't feel resentful for, but this is just a basic, in general, in general terms for yourself, do you do things for others? And it could be your kids, it can be your husband, it can be your wife, it can be your mother. Do you feel resentful doing things for other people? And number 10, I complain about other people's needs and demands when they're not around. So you do what it is that you need to do, but then you bitch about it afterwards. Okay, so those are your 10 questions. How many truths do you have? How many truths? How many apply to you? And, and for those of you that are alive with us right now, I want you to just put that in the comment section. How many truths do you have? Be honest. Because if you're not honest, that was the first one. Lie about your feelings if the truth might upset someone. Well, it's not going to upset me, but it might upset you. The truth might upset you. So if you answered true to one of those statements, just one, then you need to work on that particular action and reaction. 
if you answer true to three or more of those statements, three or more, you need some help with boundaries. It's a good thing that you're here tonight. Okay? Three or more, then you need some help because it means you kind of suck with boundaries. And my sense is that there are a lot of you that kind of suck with boundaries. True? Is that true, Chris? Yeah. So, let's just, I'm going to give you some, some examples from my life about boundaries. And because my, I, I already intuitively can tell that most of you did not just have one or two. So, when we talk about some of those things, you know, one of the ones that kind of stands out to me is um, lie about the feelings that the truth might upset someone. So just kind of let it go. So instead of, of being honest and saying how you feel, you lie to yourself. And what does that do to your vibration? What does that do to your, to, 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 to the, your power when you aren't honest with yourself? Number one, you have to remember your lies then. It's always easier to be honest because then you've got to keep track of your lies. But what it does is it takes away from your energy. It takes away from your power. It takes away from your ability to be a, a, an equal partnership or an equal friendship or, or, or whatever, whoever it is that we're dealing with when you're not honest. Now, oftentimes, then that goes into blaming. Well, but they this or they couldn't do that or I can't tell them because it'll break their heart or whatever. Honesty is always the best policy, even when it's hard. And there is a loving way to say everything. And I'm going to give you some of those words later on, ways to be able to express how you feel, because that's very, very necessary. Um, I, want, I loved this one. I just think people should know how I feel. So if I'm at my max, they should know it, and they should do something about it. Well, why should they know it? They've got their own energy that they're dealing with. Why should they be more observant of your energy than you are? And then more communicative about it. Why? Because it's easier for you? Because then you don't have to hurt anybody or break anybody's heart or speak up? Absolutely, that's why. But how does that then support you? How does that... Um, allow you to expand and grow and be authentic in who you are. If you expect people to just know where you are, I am telling you what, you are going to be disappointed over and over and over again. So I'm going to give you a little story about that. <clears throat> I've shared this in several classes, so some of you may have heard it, but um, in this work professionally, um, before that I stepped into a um, uh, a certification program um, to become a minister and a spiritual counselor and to receive a um, master's of religious science and all these different um, classes so it was a it, it was a, um, a two to three year program and so I had been a stay-at-home mom and I had at that time a two-year-old and a nine-year-old and um, I, I was going to class and I would, before I'd go to class, I'd get everything ready. I'd get dinner ready, I'd get the house cleaned up, I'd get the kids ready, get their baths and everything ready so that I could leave the house at 6.15 and my husband would get home, he could just give them dinner and not have to do anything. And I did that for six months and I was irritated. And I never told him, although I acted like it and he should have known, I never told him because uh, I didn't want to upset him. Um, I really felt like it was my job to do it um, and so I, I just did my thing and one day was the day you all know what that means it was the day that I was over my max I'd had it and so I he I got the I got dinner ready and he came home and he, I, he, I think he may, might have said something and I don't remember what it was and he didn't say anything rude but he might have said like you know what why are you rushing around so much for something like that and that pissed me off and so I was like, what do you mean? What am I rushing around? I do this every single time. I got to get dinner ready. I got to get the kids ready. I try to get the house cleaned up. I always do this and I am done because today was a really hard day and I can't do it anymore. Why don't you just make dinner? And he's like, okay. And I said, well, <laughs> that's the wrong answer. Like, why didn't you ever offer to make it before? He said, you never asked. Oh, so pissed. 
Like, are you kidding me? I never asked. You can't see with your eyes that I'm running around crazy trying to get everything done and just offer and instead you're going to wait for me to ask? I was really ticked. And then as I sat with it for a little bit, that's exactly what I heard. Is how is he supposed to know if you don't speak up? If you don't have enough value in yourself to ask for help, why should he help you? Huh. There's an idea. So, think about that. Where are the areas that you need help or that you want help but you don't speak up? Don't wait until you're burned out. Don't wait until you're pissed off or angry. Ask now. Don't have an expectation that they're going to. But you can certainly ask and be and ask with an open mind and an open heart. Um, my to-do list includes things that I don't have to do, things that I don't want to do. And this one's a little bit iffy because there are things that we all do that we probably don't really love to do. Um, we might like to do them, or they might be okay, or I just might. There might be things like I got to wash the dog, and maybe you don't love to do that, but you love your dog. So that's a part of that because you chose to have that or you know you don't really love to do the laundry but you love to have clothes or you love to have clothes on the people that are in your house so that you don't have to see them naked all the time. So I, I would look at it kind of from that perspective but things that I don't have to do. So let's talk about that have to. What is have to? Is it in my head that I'm responsible for it, but there are other people that could do it and I've just made myself the responsible one, the one that does everything, the martyr. Or is it I have to because in order to get to here I need to do this. What I would look at is where the energy is coming from in the have to. You know, I have to um, uh, run my, my accounting program so that I can make the deposits for my, for my business. Okay, yeah, I, I have to do that. And and, and I'm okay with that because the, 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 the blessing and the gift and the abundance that I receive from it is, feels good to me. And so that's a have to. But if there's a have to like, gosh, I, ha I have to make dinner because nobody else can do it. And I have a husband and a 16-year-old son, that's not a have to. That's, a, um, that's always been your role. You see what I'm saying? So, so look at those and really get clear on, is that true, that you really have to? And some of them, it might be. But I bet some of them, it's not. You've just made yourself that person. Um, I, li I like this one. I feel virtuous when I override my own needs or wishes to please others. So when I put myself at the bottom of the list, at the back of the bus, and let everybody else go in front, I feel good about me. Okay, sometimes it feels good to let, to take care of somebody else and to do something for somebody else. But I will guarantee you that if you continue to do that, you have no energy left and you become resentful and angry and bitter and frustrated and all kinds of other things because if you're always the one to give and you never receive then you don't have a way to fill up so eventually you're going to get empty and when you get empty you're going to be irritated so instead of feeling virtuous about that you want to look at it as an exchange of energy there are times when I feel like I want to be on the front of the bus. I want to be on the top of the list. I want to put myself first. And there might be times where it feels, it feels true and right and appropriate and in alignment for me to take a step back and help somebody else. But we've been taught, most of us, to make sure everybody else is taken care of first. And I know this isn't a popular answer, but it's the one I will tell you over and over again. That's bullshit. Because if you take care of everybody else first, you will never, ever, ever get to you. There's too many people. There's too much to do. There's too many have to's. And if you're on that plane that's going down into the water, and you put their mask on first, you're gone. And then they're left to try to figure out how to live without you taking care of them and you doing everything for them. And that actually is your responsibility. So instead, 
if you can be responsible for your energy and teach people how to be able to be healthy in their choices, then they can be healthy in their choices. But if you teach dependence instead, they're dependent on you. If you teach that instead, then they're going to struggle when you don't get that oxygen mask on. I know that might feel a little bit harsh, it's true. In my experience. Um, I eat, cry, smoke, drink, have sex, shop, gamble when I'm angry or when I'm sad or depressed. Boundaries. So you're hurting you. Nobody else. Although there's a ripple effect of all of those, certainly. But you are not honoring and loving you. And uh, the last one I'm going to just focus on real quick. I feel panicky at the thought of someone disliking or disapproving of me. So, well, what if they don't like me? <laughs> well, join the crowd. What if they disapprove of me? Well, join the crowd. That's okay. Does that define you? Does what other people think about you define who you are? So there could be somebody that's watching this tonight, maybe, that disapproves of what I'm saying right now. And that's okay. They have a right to their opinion. But does their disapproval um, does their disapproval make that true? So for the rest of you that are listening, that might be in alignment with some of this message, does their disapproval define that my message isn't right, or that my message isn't true, or that my message isn't good? And if I let their disapproval define that, guess what? We don't have this class. And I will tell you from a very, very young age, um, if I would have let disapproval define who I was, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. I've had lots of disapproval in my life and a lot of people that have not liked what I've done or said or been. And I'm not saying that all the times that that was happening that they weren't, they didn't have some truth in that. But what I am saying is that you have to find a way to love yourself, trust in where you are, forgive yourself for wherever you've been, and open up to the fact that their opinion is not your business. It just isn't. I did a webcast a couple months ago. Your opinion of me is none of my business. I got t-shirts. I have those t-shirts actually. I still have one or two of them I think. Your opinion of me is none of my business. It's just saying that my value isn't based on your opinion. My value is based on who I am and who I am is spirit embodied. The end. Who you are is spirit embodied. So boundaries. Let's come back to boundaries. What are they? Well, there's physical, mental, emotional, and energetic boundaries. Physical boundary is going to be the boundary that this is, you know, this is my skin and I get to choose who can touch it or who can't or who I want in this physical space or my house might be a boundary and I have the door locked. That's a, a boundary for people. So physical. Mental. People are really sloppy with their mental boundaries. What kind of shit do you let in your head? And most of that's not coming from other people. Now, like that disapproval thing, that would be part of that. Okay, that mental, oh, what are they thinking? And all this time that you spend in your head. But you're worse than they are, I'll bet. How do I know that? I've been there. I've been there. So that mental tape that you run, those stories that you tell yourself, about why you're not good enough or why people wouldn't like you or why you can't be successful or why you're never going to get married or why you have this particular disease or poor you or whatever it is that mental um, uh, storytelling really needs to get some focus and some boundaries and if it does not feel good the thought that you're thinking it is not good for you so you have to be so clear and so, so focused on all of those thoughts to clean up your mental energy. 
so that you can move into a healthier place and into a higher vibration. Okay, physical, mental, emotional, emotional boundaries. So a lot of the things that we talked about in that in the first part of that were the emotional boundaries. Um, pretending to agree with people when, when you don't really, or not telling the truth, or not speaking up for yourself, or not doing the things that you want to do. All of the things that, that you feel in your body that put you at harm, um, and, and, and you can feel that harm. Like You feel it when you're not being honest. And you feel it when you say, yeah, I'll do that, and it doesn't feel good to you. You feel that. Pay attention to it. Physical, mental, emotional, and energetic. Energetic boundaries. Now, to me, energetic boundaries are more important than all of the others. To me. And the reason that is is because if I um, clean up my energetic vibration, if I create boundaries around my energetic body, then I'm able to observe and witness other people's energy. And I don't take it on and absorb it as my own. Because when I take on people's energy and absorb it as my own, my physical, mental, and emotional boundaries are gone. I've taken it on and said, come on home with me and your tr trouble is my trouble and we'll figure out a way to fix it. And, but, but I'm not talking to them. I'm, that's what I'm doing within myself. Energetic boundaries to me are the most important because if I create energetic boundaries, then I have the, the energy to be able to hold the other boundaries. I have the clarity to be able to see where I end and somebody else begins. What's mine and what's not mine. When I don't have that energetic boundary, I'm a big old muddled mess. And then I don't know where the emotional boundaries are, the physical boundaries are, the mental boundaries are. So my suggestion would be to start there. Energetic boundaries. So what is an energetic boundary? An energetic boundary is something that says, this is my space. This is my energetic space. It's nothing to do with my physical body. It's my energetic space. I get to choose what lives inside of this energetic space. I get to choose what I allow into it. And I do not choose to have energy that is not in alignment, that does not feel good to me. I do not choose to absorb the energy of anybody out here. Anyone, my children, my spouse, my parents, my very best friend, I carry and hold my own energy so that it can be a clear vessel to be able to be of support, loving support to all of these people when I'm full. And when I hold my own energy, I can maintain that fullness. But if I am, on the other hand, sloppy with my energetic boundaries or have none, that I'm giving to this person, I'm giving to this person, I'm giving to this person. I've absorbed their pain, their sadness, their anger, their frustration, sometimes their illness. And as much energy as I bring in goes out immediately and I never feel connected, grounded, peaceful, secure, safe, connected. Because it's a constant drain of energy for me. How many of you relate to that? If you're online, what I'd like you to do is just write down what you feel like is your biggest struggle with boundaries. And I'm going to just talk about a few of those topics that you guys bring up. What is your biggest struggle? So like I said, for me, if you hold your energetic boundaries, then your emotional and your physical and your mental boundaries are going to be in, in, in better, a better place simply because of that. So that's where I would start. It's like instead of putting a band-aid on top of things, let's get to the core of it. Let's get to the very, very beginning of it and then start having the ripple effect of, 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 of cleaning up my emotional boundaries and cleaning up my physical boundaries and, 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 and speaking the truth to people and, and being honest about, 
uh, about where I'm at and what I want and where I want to go and, 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 and saying, you know what, this doesn't feel good to me and all of those things which can come. But if I don't have my energy clear, then I don't know if it's your stuff or my stuff. And if, as long as I don't know if it's your stuff or my stuff, I'm going to believe it's all my stuff. And if I believe it's all my stuff, I got a big problem because then I can't heal it. I cannot heal your stuff. So if I'm carrying your stuff and I can't heal your stuff, I can only heal my stuff, well, I don't feel like I'm getting better then. I don't feel like I'm getting clearer then. I don't feel like I'm having peace because I'm still carrying your stuff. So let's go to some of the comments, thoughts. We have a question. How do you tell the difference between needing to say no and being compassionate because the other person is doing what they are because they're in pain? Um, the way that you know, that's a really great question, the way that you know that you need to say no versus being compassionate is when it's even a question for you, number one. So if it's a question, I would say it's probably that you need to say no. Um, the other way I would know is what my body says. I pay attention to how my body feels. That's always a signal to me. So if my body gets tight and I'm saying yes and my body gets tight, oh, yeah, that was the wrong answer, Sonny. And I do want to talk about that a little bit, so I'll just, I'll just go there right now. Saying yes. How many of you say yes to everything? You just, yeah, I can do that, yeah, I can do that, yeah, I can do that, yeah, I can help you, yeah, I can help you, oh, yeah, I'll get that, I'll get to that. How many of you say yes to your kid's school, and yes to your husband's work, and yes to your friends, and yes to your family, and yes to Thanksgiving, and, and so you say yes to all of those things, and feel overwhelmed. Now, if you say yes, and you are excited, and you want to do it, and you love it, and, and it's fun, and it's, it, it feels really good to you, and you have the energy to do it, by all means, do it. As long as you're not doing it because you feel responsible or you feel like you have to, do it. I say yes to a lot of things. Many of you that are, that are clients and students of mine, you know that. You, you see what I do. I say yes to a lot of things. My energy doesn't get drained. People ask me all the time, all the time, how do you do everything you do? And the first few times, I mean, people have asked me that, you know, the last 15 years. But especially as I've gotten busier and people will say that, you know, the first few times people ask me, I was like, why do they ask me that? Like, I'm just doing what I do. But what I started to realize was I say yes to the things that feel good. Now, I haven't always been that way. So I understand saying yes out of a place of responsibility and out of a place of guilt and out of a place of, of, of um, poor them. I get it. I've, I've been there. But what I started realizing, and part of this was because I did get busier, I had to get some priorities. And one of my priorities is, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. If it's not fun, I don't want to do it. Now, my idea of fun and your idea of fun would be very different, I'm sure. I have a lot of things that are fun to me that not everybody thinks are fun. I have fun organizing a closet. I have, not my clothes closet though. I don't like organizing my clothes closet. But like my office or my, my, my um, filing cabinet. I have fun doing accounting. I have fun learning about QuickBooks. I have fun going for a walk. I have fun playing with my, my dogs. I have fun um, doing my bills. Like I write, thank you very much, and put a little peace sign on all of my checks. Like, I have fun with so many aspects of my life. I have fun teaching and I have fun speaking, but I'm not going to teach a class that I don't think is fun. Even if the topic might be heavy, like, you know, last week I did a class on guilt and shame. That was a tough topic, but I had fun doing it. It brought me joy because I could see some of the eyes opening and some of the healing occurring. So that to me, feels good. And if it feels good, I'll do it. If it doesn't feel good, I'm not willing to lose my energy to do something that I don't have to do. And the truth of the matter is, we all have choices in life. And we may use the excuse that I have to, but it's not always the case. Yes, somebody has to make dinner. It doesn't have to be you. 
And if you're somebody that's single and you're like, well, kind of sunny it does, not really. I mean, you do have choices. You could go and get something somewhere to eat. Okay, well, then it's expensive. That's not what we we're talking about. What we we're talking about is you don't have to do it. People will always find excuses, and I am really good at walking you out of those excuses because I've done them all. I've said them. I know. I I've been there. I had a lot of excuses. So when you say yes all the time, so, so back to that question, listen to your body. So I was a yeser. I said yes all the time. And then I would resent it. And then I'd feel overwhelmed. And then I'd feel angry. And then I'd feel frustrated with myself. And then I'd be frustrated with them. How do they expect me to do this? Well, you told them you would. And of course, knowing me, I'll do it. Because if I said I would, I'm gonna. But then I could resent it the whole time. Well, one of the things that I started to realize in some of those situations was I don't want somebody doing something for me out of resentment, ever, out of obligation, ever. I want people to do things with me and for me, to help me and to support me because they want to. And so I realized, well, Sunny, if you want that, it's not fair for you not to be that. And so that's how that started to shift for me, is I, had a, I, I made a choice, a conscious choice, that if it felt good to me and I wanted to do it, then I would, but I was going to be in it 100%. And if it didn't, I wasn't going to say yes just because I wanted them to like me. And I've lost a lot of people that at one time liked me. And that's okay, because guess what? I found a whole bunch more, and so will you. Okay, so let's go back to some of the comments. A lot, I'm sure. So we'll just go go through, pick pick which ones you ever that jump out to you, Chris. Okay, um, the proverbial element elephant in the room. I absorb the energy of the thing that no one is talking about. I don't know what it is that is not being said and take it personal, thinking it's me. Yeah. Um, okay, number one, if you know you do that, then you can just cancel out the fact that it's you. So just don't go there. Go, okay, yeah, I know, you're, I'm going to go to the place where I think it's about me, but you know what, not everything is about me. So try and have that conversation with yourself. Um, <laughs> the elephant in the room, I usually talk to. So if there's something that people aren't talking about, I tend to be the one that says, well, so what about this? Let's talk about it. Let's get it out. Let's, let's communicate about it. And that's not always comfortable for people. And I can't tell you that it's always comfortable for me. But it is more uncomfortable for me to pretend that it isn't there, to not be honest about it, and to not be honest about how I'm feeling with it there. So I may say something like, so are we going to talk about this or what? And most of the time people are like, nope, we'll just skip over it. And I'm like, uh-uh, that, that won't work for me. It won't work for me. It doesn't feel okay. So I honor how it feels to me. And some people choose not to talk about it. And others choose to talk about it. But I have to acknowledge it. Okay? Uh, my husband loves action movies, but they make me sick. My constant no to watching with him, with him was very hard for him to understand. He says we can't always like the same things, but that's what marriage is all about. So, marriage is about compromise, yes. And it depends on how you feel. If it doesn't feel good to your spirit, then... I would say it doesn't feel good to my spirit and find other things to do outside of action movies and you know I have this in my house I, I it's not action movies but my husband and my um, son watch that um, Walking Dead and it's about zombies and I don't I my spirit is too sensitive to watch a lot of television let alone that. And so as soon as it comes on, I bail. I'm out. And a couple of times, 
you know, at this point, for as long as I've been doing this, they don't even try to talk me into it. So, um, but a couple of times they're like, well, it really isn't that bad, you know, like it really isn't that bad. But I'm like, ah, it doesn't matter to me. So I just go and do something that feels good to me. Now, if, my, if that bothered my husband, he'd have to get over it. Sorry, that's a boundary for me. I'm not going to watch it. Just like a boundary for him is he's not going to watch Grease with me for the 150th time. He's just not going to. And so I have to be okay with that and find other things that we do connect with. But if you break your boundary to try to make somebody else happy, it's hurting you. And then you set them up to expect it over and over and over again. See, the thing with boundaries is once you decide what they are, you create them and communicate them, because you have to do that, then it's your responsibility to hold them, nobody else's. So just because you made a boundary doesn't mean that people are going to go, oh, okay, you made a boundary, I'm going to stop doing that. They're probably going to push against it even harder. And it's your responsibility to hold that boundary, not theirs. And it doesn't mean that they don't love you if they don't hold it. It means they're being who they are. They're doing what they've always done. They're following a pattern that's been there for years. That's ingrained in them, whether it's from your relationship or something that happened before. So you get to choose what you want to do and what you don't want to do. And if it doesn't feel good to you, don't do it. Now, there might be times where it feels okay. There's once in a while where they're going to go see a movie that might be a little more kind of action than what I might watch, but I might go because I feel like I want to. Then I listen. And sometimes I put the movie over like this and I kind of hide a little bit from part, some of the parts that are a little bit uh, to me. I, I listen to my spirit. Because overall, that's going to tell me what's healthy for me and what isn't. Okay, another question? Uh, I speak my truth and in, in return I'm alone. Yep, that can happen. It is sometimes lonely. What I would tell you is I would look at how do you speak it. Do you speak it from a place of love? Or do you speak it from a place of frustration, anger, resentment, judgment, criticism? Do you speak it from a place of I know better than you? Or do you speak it from a place of I'm just honoring me? And it's very different. And I, and I don't know what your answer is. But that's one of the things that we have to look at. And it can be lonely. It can be a very lonely place when you are really in a place of clearing out the things in your life that don't serve you any longer. And boundaries do that. But it also creates an opportunity for new energies to come in. Okay, you got another one? Yep, I let people get close and then they use me. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Take a breath before I answer this, okay? Every doormat says welcome. And people can't use you without your permission. And I think you know that that's true. And we have to get out of the victim role of they're using me and instead say, I allow people to use me. Because in those moments, it feels good to have somebody around, or it feels good to have somebody to spend time with, or it feels like they care. And it doesn't mean that they don't care. People that are using people, it doesn't always mean that they don't care. If there's something that they care about or they wouldn't be there. But sometimes they're there to teach you how to speak up and not be used. You know, a, a, an example of that, when I was a teenager, and when I was 16, um, for my 16th birthday, my dad bought me a convertible Cavalier, brand new. So it was a 2000 or a 2000. <laughs> I'm really young. Um, a 1987 um, convertible Cavalier, and it was um, just is a beautiful brand new car. And I had already quit high school. I'd quit high school. Uh, over a year earlier, well, about a year earlier. Um, but, boy, did the phone calls start coming in after I got that car because number one, I had wheels and I had really nice ones and so people would want to come, ask me to come pick them up, they'd invite me to go see a movie with their friends 
and I would think, oh, okay, cool, I get to be a part of their friends, but then I would be separated or isolated, or sometimes they would hang with me during that, but then afterwards they wouldn't talk to me again until the next time. And it really, really hurt my spirit. It really broke my spirit because I already struggled so much with having people in my life and friends and people that I could trust and because I never felt like I fit in. And um, it caused me at that time, without the conscious awareness of it, it caused me to really hold people at a distance and to um, not trust them. Even though I'd let them in, I let them in all the time, I didn't trust them because I didn't trust myself. So people can't use you without your permission. And as soon as you quit giving permission, you will attract a different kind of people. And I say that with a lot of love because I've been there. Another one, Chris? Um, yeah. People not taking no for an answer drives me crazy. I just want to run and hide when they continue to do this over and over again, trying to make me say yes. Okay. So with saying no, let's just practice this a little bit. So if somebody says, will you head up the fundraiser? And you don't want to. And you say no. Well, you know what? We really need you. You're so good. You've done it for the last 17 years. And you know how to do it. And you know everybody. Could you just, you know, we'll get you lots of help. No. Um, well, but, you know, we're, we're going to be lost. We're not going to have any money. The kids aren't going to be able to eat. Da -da 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 -da, whatever the story is. No. Now, what usually happens for people when they start to learn how to say no is they don't actually say no. They say, I can't because blah, 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 blah. And when people hear your blah, 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 they look at the way that they can make that work. Oh, well, if you can't do it on Thursdays, Sunday's fine. Or, oh, well, if you can't be there for the whole time, two hours is okay. Or if you can't be the, 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 the head of it, you, you can be the assistant. Or if you can't be the president, you can be the treasurer. So when you try to explain why you can't do something, you open the door wider. And then when they do it again, you open the door wider. Your response can be as simple as, that won't work for me. I am really sorry, but that will not work for me. The end. The end, the end, the end. You don't have to explain yourself. It, nobody has, has um, the, the, there's no answer that's going to be good enough for someone who really wants you to do something. And believe me, I know, I've had a lot of people try to talk me into a lot of stuff. I'm sure many of you have. And they'll find a way if you, if you give them that doorway. Shut the door. The other way, for those of you that don't want to say no, you're like, Man, I don't know, maybe I do, I don't know. And say, you know what, let me think about that for a few days. Or I always say, you know what, I want to meditate on it. And I do meditate on it, and then I'll get back with them. Because if I don't feel completely clear when they ask, which most of the time I do, but if I don't feel completely clear when they ask, I meditate on it. I had a situation happen a couple months ago that somebody came to me and asked me to do something. I couldn't get clear on it. I meditated on it for two weeks. And I got clear on it. And then I called them and gave them my answer. So you can do that. But if you really know you don't want to do it, then I am so sorry, but that is just not going to work for me. Done. That's the way I would say it. That just won't work for me. And if, if you want to say, you know what, it doesn't feel right to me, say that. Whatever language you want to use. But don't open the door, well, because my son's coming home and I don't want to miss. Oh, well, we'll do it the next day. Don't explain yourself. Okay? Okay, let's do one more, Chris. Um, not being true with what I want, not speaking my truth. Yeah. That's a tough one. Not being true with what you want. A lot of times that's because you're scared that you're going to be judged. Um, you're afraid that you're not going to get it. And um, you don't feel worthy of it. Those are the three things that stand out to me. There could be others, but those are the three that stand out to me. And so 
first thing, the work then really is um, for you to get into a vibrational space that allows you to see from a higher perspective, that allows you to know your value and your worth, um, that gives you an opportunity to be in an energy within yourself of recognizing who you really are. You are spirit embodied and you in your spirit are equal to me or you and your body are equal to me and my body. So if you're watching right now, whatever body you're in, wherever you are, we could trade and we'd still be the same, meaning we're equal. There's no difference. Your spirit is embodied in the body that you chose, believe it or not, and my spirit is embodied. The spirit within us is of equal value. It's of equal value. So my spirit could go jump on your body and it has the same value over there as it has here. Or it could jump into so-and-so's body and it has the same value there that it has here. But we don't look at that. We look at value based on the external. Based on how we look and how much money we have and if we have the 2.2 kids and if we have the house and if we're 115 pounds and blah, 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 blah. That's all bullshit. That's not where the value, the value is never about the external. It's always about the internal. Always, always, always. So you have the same value. So you are worthy. So you do deserve simply because you're here. And when you can't share what it is you really want, it's usually because you're afraid you don't deserve it or you're not going to get it. And when you're in a place to not share what you want, you're not going to get it. Okay, you're not going to get it because if you don't attract, if you, if you can't own that energy, you can't bring it to you. You can't attract it to you. So you have to get out of your own way. Love yourself enough. Know that you are worthy. We have the same energy within us. So if I can create what I've created, you can create whatever you want to create. You know, Julian Lennon created what he wanted to create. Um, Elvis created what he wanted to create. Um, Oprah creates what she wants to create. Every one of us has the same amount of spirit within us that has the capacity to create all, everything that you ever desired. It isn't that, oh, one body got more than the other. They didn't. They didn't. Okay, I feel like I need to do one more, Chris. I care for my child with a disability. It takes a lot of my energy and can be very overwhelming. How do you balance your energy when you have such a large responsibility? That's a great question. And I think a lot of people, you know, I, I haven't ever had a child that ha has had a major disability like that. Um, I've had a child that's had some, some quote-unquote disabilities, but not to that extent. But I think a lot of people could put different words in there and they would feel the same. So, so your question was, how do you balance your life when you have such a major responsibility? Well, I think that a lot of people... Um, would say that I have a major responsibility in, in, in my work environment, in, in, in having to go to work every day and, and, and keep a household running, men or women. Um, I think that people could say that about their responsibility to, to help their children out. Um, I think people could say that about their responsibility for an illness that they created and how do they balance their energy. H how you balance your energy is, is you make sure that you're honoring your needs and you make sure that you ask for help and you make sure that you allow those opportunities for help to come to you so it's not good enough to just ask for it but it's important to then receive it so I've got to ask and put my hand out and let that energy and that support come back to me if I just ask but I keep myself closed like this then it can't come to me it won't come to me I won't allow it to come to me. And instead, oftentimes, I don't know if this is a case for you, but oftentimes people become a martyr. Well, I have to do this and poor me and that's my, that's my lot in life. And I'm not saying that it's easy and I'm not negating the, the, the difficulty in it, but I'm saying almost everyone has some very deep sense of responsibility in their life that they could allow to hold them back. And if you could ask for help and ask for support and allow yourself to receive it, that's how you bring the balance in. That's how you bring the, 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 
the, the, the, the peace in. And, you know, meditation is great. And even just going for a walk or going outside for 15 minutes is great. Those are things that bring you into balance. And see, when you're, when you're not holding your boundaries, it's very likely you're out of balance. It's absolutely um, critical. So these are the things, th this is what we have to do. And I just I want to make sure I get to this because I know our time's getting close. Um, when, when you are wanting to create boundaries, number one, you have to decide what is the boundary that you need to create. Well, I would look at the areas of my life that I'm having the most struggle. What are my issues? And is it that I'm saying yes to everybody? Is it that I feel like I'm going to disappoint people? Is it that I'm not honest with myself? Kind of those questions we went over before. Look at those questions and you can watch this over again. So look at those questions and, and the ones that you answered, true. And go, okay, that's a, that's a priority. That's an area that I need to get some boundaries in. So once you decide that, you want to you wanna look at, is, is it an inflexible boundary? Am I very rigid in that? Is it, is, is it that I've had collapsible boundaries where I make a boundary and then I let it go and then I make a boundary and I let it go and I make a boundary and I let it go? Or can you find healthy boundaries? So the rigid is the one that I'm a control freak and I'm going to make sure it's this absolute way. We want to have some flexibility in it. Um, the, the collapsible boundaries are the ones that so many people have where they say, no, you can't do that, and then they do it again, and then they do it again, and they do it again, and then it gets just exhausting, and so then you just don't do it anymore. And, and, and I've been there too, so I understand that. It's like, ugh, whatever. That always hurts you. It always hurts you. So once you have the boundary, once you recognize where you need the boundaries, and remember, every doormat says welcome, so don't be a doormat any longer. People cannot take advantage of you without your permission. So once I know the areas that I need the boundaries, let's say I need a boundary in saying no. Um, then I have to look at, okay, that, this is an issue for me. So what is my response going to be? How am I going to handle that? And so my response might be, you know, that's not going to work for me or that doesn't feel right for me right now. And then I'm going to practice that, continuously practice that. And then, this is the challenge, is when people push against that. And they will. I guarantee you they will push against it. Because you need to get stronger. And so the universe is going to give you opportunities to get stronger and make sure you're clear about your boundaries. So you will have plenty of chances. Okay? So then, as you get stronger, um, and you, you continue to enforce that boundary, it will be easy. Then it'll be kind of natural. But until you get strong, it's going to take a lot of your time and attention, energetic energy, energetic attention also, to hold that boundary. Oh, I'm going down that road. Shit, I said yes to five people, and you know what? That, that last one didn't feel good. And you have to clean it up. So you go back to that person, you say, you know what? I realized that I agreed to do this yesterday, but I wasn't really... Um, tuned in to what felt right to me and, and this just doesn't feel right to me and I'm sorry that I agreed to it um, because I know that, they, that you counted on me but at this point um, I realize that I'm just not your person. Be honest. Don't get into it and, and, and wait 10 days later and not tell somebody and then be um, have them all dependent on you and then be so angry and frustrated and all of those things. Do not do that because you will set yourself up for a lot of pain. Okay? So decide where you need the boundaries, make the boundaries, and communicate the boundaries. So for the people in your life, like the example that I used with my husband, after that conversation, he said, well, you never asked. I, I, after I settled down for a couple of days because I was pissed that he would even say I should have asked, and then I got it, and then I went to him and I said, okay, I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm saying, you know what, this is too hard for me. And... So I communicated that boundary that said, you know what, on one night you need to cook dinner and the other night I'll cook dinner of the nights that I was gone. And it was fine. And then it felt good. And it felt at ease. And there wasn't, I didn't have a challenge with that after that first time. Because I, because I blew up, really. Don't go, don't get to the place where you have to blow up. The other thing is, once you've gotten the boundary and you've decided what it is and you've communicated that boundary, then you have to hold the boundary again. Remember, nobody else, it's nobody else's responsibility, it's yours. But one of the things that happens is that, especially in our closer circles, usually family because they're our greatest teachers, part of the communication with boundaries is that um, 
people struggle with how to maintain them so 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 and how to express my feelings around them and this is part of the language a language set that you can use um, because you want to use I statements so and what I mean by I statements is it makes it always about me it's not ever about you it's always about me because it is always about me your experience within you is always about you your response to other people's experiences is always about you okay so I statements so an I statement could be something to the effect of when when you call me to invite me to go to dinner but then you have 10 other friends come I feel I feel like I'm being used and what I really would like to experience is a time where maybe we go out to dinner on our own so it's when blank happens I feel blank and what I'd really like to feel or experience is blank that's kind of the language loop that you would use now it doesn't mean people are gonna agree and it doesn't mean that people are gonna do it but what it means is I'm setting it up and I'm communicating clearly what it is that I feel I need right now and some people will hear that and some people won't and some people will follow it and some people won't don't have expectation that they have to follow it have an expectation that you're gonna hold your ground so if that didn't happen then mm, I'm not going to choose to go out to dinner it's not a threat it's saying I, I get to choose how to spend my energy and if it doesn't feel good to me I don't want to do it remember you deserve to feel good boundaries are a beautiful thing if they're communicated and if they're maintained if they're not communicated and not maintained they make a great big mess okay so when you think about boundaries look at your life where are the areas that you know you need help with this and then get clear about it and get focused on what you can do because you are responsible for your energy nobody is doing anything to you I know people don't like to hear that I was in a victim role and a martyr role for many years I get how we get uh, how we're there but nobody's doing anything to you without your permission so choose something different and communicate it and then if they don't follow the boundary then maintain that boundary you know what and if this doesn't happen you know if you continue to beat me I am going to leave and if they put one more hand up leave that's the boundary right my boundary when when my son uh, was born that those first couple years my boundary that I broke probably 50 times was if you keep drinking I'm going to leave if you keep drinking I'm going to leave if you keep drinking I'm going to leave. that was our fight freaking every single day how many of you have done that you say it because you're frustrated you say it because you're angry and you really mean it but you don't really mean it so my boyfriend at the time that, that, that it went in with one ear and out the other by the time I said it the 30th time I was like yeah that's just like part of her language she just says that guess what one day I meant it now I didn't enforce it many of those times sometimes I moved out for a couple days here or there once in a while but one day came and one day that one day was the day that I don't know what happened I don't know how I crossed that line God I wish I did because I would tell you but I think what happened was I had conviction within myself I am not going to say this one more time and put myself down by allowing it to happen again and so that last time I said I'm not doing it anymore I'm leaving and he didn't believe me he didn't believe me and I moved out while he was gone into a house didn't talk to him for a few few days and then I'll be damned he found me actually I found him actually I found him actually I created the boundary I said I'm done you won't quit drinking I'm not doing this anymore I moved out I found a house I had no money I was on welfare and food stamps and just trying to make barely live I found a house 
I lived there for five days and he never came to find me. He never even looked for me. He was on a five day drunken spree and never even knew I left. I was so pissed. How can I take my son and all of my shit out of our shack house and you don't notice I'm gone? He never had come home. And so that made me mad. So I went in search of him to let him know that I'd left. How sick is that? Seriously, that's a true story. He didn't even know I was gone. And so then I had to go show him, hey, I left. And well, a week or so later, he was starting to come back to the house that I had moved into, started visiting me. I let him right back in. Now, I had a little bit better boundaries. I didn't let him drink around me. I didn't let him drink in that house. But he was still drinking. And then the day came where I said, if you're not, if you don't quit drinking by the end of the year, I'm leaving. And I used that as my goal. And that was seven months away. If you don't leave by the end of the year, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I kept, and I reminded him. I held my boundary. I reminded him. And yeah, I didn't see him change, I didn't see him change, I didn't see him change. But I was giving him till the end of the year. And on December 27th, my uncle died, who lived in California, which is where I lived at the time. And on December 27th, my uncle died, and my parents said, we're coming down to go to uncle's funeral. And, um, and they were in another state. I, they were in Arizona, I was in California. And December 27th, December 31st, four days difference. I said, bring the truck. And I made sure that I said that out loud to several people. I'm leaving, I'm, I packed up my stuff so that I would be accountable for myself. That was my boundary and I left. And it was one of the hardest things I did ever in my life. And one of the best. I did not ever cry another tear over that situation. I cried them over the fact that my son would miss his dad or not know his his dad which is his birth father um, I cried over a lot of different things but I never cried again over the fact that I didn't love myself enough to do something different not one more tear and you can all do the same I believe in you so I know I'm over. I'm out of my time. Um, I want to make a couple of announcements. The next um, webcast is December something. Do you know, Chris? I'll look for you. Okay, thank you. I'll tell you in a minute. Um, and what I would love for all of you to do is every at the end of every webcast, I try to give you some kind of a special offer, and then I always ask if you would. Um, help us share this message. I do these things for free. Um, I've done them this entire year. I just this afternoon was thinking I gotta see what I'm gonna roll out for next year. The webcasts are, I know they've been of value to a lot of people. I've heard some really great comments. What I would love for you to do if you gained something from this webcast tonight, one thing I'd love you to do is share it with people. You know, whether you share it on Facebook, share it with your friends, email, whatever. The other thing I'd love for you to do is to go to my fan page and or my personal page and tell me one thing that you learned today. One thing that you learned about boundaries that maybe you're gonna do differently or that's gonna help support you in your boundaries or um, some little nugget of information because I, I do read those and um, I like to hear and, 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 and get a sense of kind of what's clicking for all of you because I don't get to be on the side where you know Chris is reading all of the um, uh, messages that you guys are writing. I don't get to see all those, but I love to hear the things that really kind of stand out for you. So I would love for you to share those with me if you would. And for those of you that are watching after um, our live event, um, still, you can do the same thing. I would love to see those. Uh, and then finally, the um, the special offer for tonight is, uh, and, and I don't have the one with me, but um, some of you know that I have uh, SD Jewelry. It's a, a jewelry line that is designed by um, that's designed by uh, Tara Jack. This is the Archangel Jophiel um, piece and it's a citrine um, stone with a Swarovski crystal. And uh, so what I thought would be a gift that, that I could give you a discount on tonight is the Archangel Michael one. So the Archangel Michael one is blue 
um, lapis and it's a clear crystal, um, Swarovski crystal wing. And so the reason I'm offering him is because Archangel Michael is the angel of protection. Helps us to maintain, protect our own boundaries. And uh, so I thought that might be a good reminder for some of you. So we have a special offer in the store. If you go to my website and you go on the boutique, uh, go into the boutique, um, the code word is boundaries. And it's five dollars off the bracelet. They're forty-four dollars, um, so it saves you five bucks, and might be just a great reminder, especially if you've been, you know, enjoy the jewelry, um, to 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 kind of set an intention that okay, I, I need to hold my boundaries. And so, you know, like that's why I wear um, my bracelets specifically. I wear different ones at different times for different reasons. Um, and so, Michael is is the one that we would that would we would call in for that. Um, so. The coupon code is boundaries. If you go into the into the um, into the boutique, um, and the next December eighteenth, so it's a week before Christmas, and the topic is, do you know? I don't even remember what the topic is. What, I what is I thought that I knew what the topic was, and then I started uh, what thinking, is love? what is love? What is love? That's the topic. So we're going to be talking about love and all kinds of love. And finally, last but not least, because I have your attention, every year we have a um, Christmas party fundraiser. It is um, a way that we raise money. I have a 501c3 foundation. And it is the annual tradition, this is the 11th annual Christmas um, party fundraiser, where we raise money for children with medical needs. And we help those families during Christmas to try to, to lighten their load a little bit and bring some holiday cheer and, and, and um, spirit to them. And we do that Christmas party, we do a, um, a silent auction where we um, auction off particular items and gifts and and sometimes it's airline tickets or it's hotel stays or it's um, a beautiful tea set or uh, stuffed animals or an electric guitar or a hotel certificate or a gift card for a hundred dollars to Walmart or all different types of things and it is on December 8th which is a Sunday and we um, would really love your help and support we would love for you to come and join us if you're local here in Glendale Arizona um, if you're not local and you have the ability to be able to support us in whatever way um, it would be great because we we've had so much need this year in our community that our funds are very very low in our foundation so we would really like to be able to raise a good amount of money to be able to help people because we've been that we've had a lot of death and a lot of um, um, trauma in in our community so that we've been helping them so much that we really have not much left so if if that if that resonates with you, if you feel guided to, um, you can contact my assistant, Amy, at SunnyDonJohnston.com, or you can send us a message on Facebook if you have something you could donate for the silent auction. If you can come and join us, that would be great. We're going to have a tree of love this year. We're going to light up luminaries and, and, um, and let you buy little ornaments that you can put on the tree, and we're going to do a, a, a ceremony to honor our loved ones that have transitioned, and along with the... Um, the, the um, silent auction and Santa coming and all those great things so I just wanted to number one thank you for joining us and I hope that you guys have a wonderful wonderful Thanksgiving holiday and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in December right before Christmas but if you can join us or if you can support our cause um, we would we would love that any any gifts um, that we can use for the silent auction are very very welcome so thank you all so very much and we'll see you soon <laughs>